There is a really big misconception out there, and I had this misconception as well in my undergrad when I was studying nuclear engineering, is the fact that if you have an undergrad in nuclear engineering or another specialized field, your job options are very limited in the nuclear energy industry. You can only do one type of job, which for me, I thought it was a nuclear engineer. That's why in this video, I'm gonna tell you why that's not the case. And here's the good news. There's a variety and ocean's worth of jobs that you can take on in the nuclear energy industry. That's why in this video, I'm gonna share with you top five career paths that you can take on with the background in nuclear engineering. This also applies if you have an, another engineering background or whether you're transitioning from another industry into the nuclear energy industry, this video is gonna be very relevant to you. Hey friends, my name is Osama. I have a background in nuclear engineering and on this channel, I help demystify nuclear technologies by simplifying them. And if you're new to my channel, I also help create educational videos like this one where I give you tips and tricks about careers in the nuclear energy industry. Videos I wish I had when choosing the right path or simply getting my foot into the industry. Let's jump into this video. Let's start off with my favorite project management. Now project management is very popular in the nuclear energy industry. So these roles may be called project coordinator, project manager, project lead. So the nuclear energy industry has mega projects, whether they be new builds, new nuclear reactors being built across the world, they need large teams and project teams that are specialized towards certain projects. Certain project teams may be developing, you know, the infrastructure, certain teams may be developing certain systems and designs of a nuclear power plant. Or there are other mega projects like decommissioning, like refurbishment of nuclear reactors. So project management is a very popular role with the nuclear energy industry. You need an army of project management staff. Remember, a mega project is chunked down into sizable pieces, and those pieces are managed by project management staff. Also, during the operations of a nuclear power plant, you also need project managers who are helping out with different projects that are maintaining the reactor as well. So there's that different streams of project management that you can take when you're working in the nuclear energy industry. I specifically like project management because you're dealing with a variety of tasks, right? So if you get bored very easily on the job, I think this is a really cool career to explore. You know, you're dealing with project costs, you're dealing with technical details, you're dealing with people. So you need very strong interpersonal communication skills. You're also dealing with installations, procurement of materials, and you need to be able to effectively drive the project. So you're always having obstacles and challenges coming your way and you need to be lean, you need to be efficient and really need to to overcome those challenges. So you need that balance of strong technical skills to understand what's actually going on and also that strong communications acumen, okay? Because you're working with teams, you're working in groups and you're working with different people from different backgrounds. So if you wanna challenge yourself, especially while you're early in your career, you may wanna check that out. A really cool certification that you can get as well once you start in your project management career is PMI, okay? The Project Management Institute Certificate. So that's something that you might wanna look into if you're looking to go down that route. Next is nuclear power operator. And remember nuclear power operators, yes, they are not like Homer Simpsons, I promise. It's a really cool career. And this is a really popular career that a lot of engineers are shifting into. And the reason why is for a few reasons. I'll jump into them right now. Well, number one, the compensation is a lot better than engineering. Yes, operators are very well paid. Number two is that operators are working in a crew. The crew in an operations perspective is kind of like your second family. So from the experiences that I've heard, working with your crewmates is an extremely fun, engaging experience. It's very different than sitting in a cubicle, doing some engineering work and time to time working with your team you really need that teamwork element and developing those bonds within your crew. And another reason why is because it's a very hands-on environment. It's a different challenge. It's a career path which requires a lot of knowledge and application of that knowledge on a hands-on perspective as well. And lastly, another reason why is because you can progress your career into that of an ANO, an authorized nuclear operator, or after that, a shift manager, which are extremely prestigious roles in the nuclear energy industry. Nuclear power operators start off as NOITs or nuclear operators in training which is a two-year program where they learn everything to know about being an operator. Okay, so this is kind of like going to school, you're doing training modules, okay, for that two year period, you're being tested as well. Then you get assigned to a crew and eventually you start working as an operator. And remember, operators can do various other roles, okay? An operator isn't necessarily the person sitting in the control room at all times. You gotta really work up to that, remember that. There are many other roles for operators throughout the nuclear power plant. Although those with a nuclear engineering background will have a strategic advantage when it comes to nuclear power operations, remember, you know, you are learning on the job as a nuclear operator in training. So overall, it's a pretty challenging and rewarding career and something that I recommend looking into. All right, next are technical engineering roles. So remember, if you like the technical engineering aspect, like design engineering, I really recommend 
looking into some of these career paths. So there's several that you can take, like you can become a systems engineer overlooking various systems within a nuclear power plant. So specific systems. So you're developing that specificity and knowledge within that subsystem and how it connects to other systems across a nuclear power plant. You can also become a reactor design engineer. So, you know, designing reactor components, creating engineering changes to specific components so that they fit the specific requirements, creating engineering design changes to existing components as well. Also overseeing field execution of modifications that are being made to that of components on site. So in short, if there's a refurbishment or a new build going on, you're there on site understanding what modifications are being made to that of different components. Remember for these roles, you gotta have a really strong attention or detail, just like what we are taught and also a very strong background in various engineering concepts. Okay, engineering concepts and their application to that of nuclear science and technology. Yes, yeah, something cool that you might want to check out. Next is academia or research. So many friends and peers in the nuclear energy industry that I've had a chance to work with have actually excelled in academia or research. Okay, there's a lot of research and R&D that's going on at all facets of the nuclear life cycle, whether it be fuel development, whether it be decommissioning and waste management, whether it be small modular reactors and designing reactors from scratch or new builds and you know research in terms of how to enhance, you know, reduce cost and enhance safety. There is a wealth of research going on continuously across the nuclear energy industry. So one stream is that of academia. You can really work as a maybe a master student, a PhD student, a postdoc student, or simply a researcher in a lab working side by side with the professor whose primary job is to do research at the institute. Uh, another one could be joining other research institutes like Unini University Nuclear Engineering Network, or maybe COG, Candu Owners Group, and many other organizations in within the nuclear energy industry which are conducting research, like utilities, like that of vendors. So research and academia are definitely another career path that you can take as well. All right. So another popular question that I get is what about other roles in the nuclear energy industry? What about non-technical roles? Can I take those on? Well, personally, my philosophy is that the world is your oyster. In your career, you're constantly building skills, okay? Whether they be soft skills or hard technical skills, okay? And these skills have layovers and these overlapping skills can help you get even more opportunities outside of the realm of engineering. Okay, for example, you can work in business development. You can work in a strategic department, strategy. You can also work in communications. If that's something that you're harnessing, you're developing over time and you show that, hey, listen, I have the ability or the unique potential technical acumen to contribute to this role as well. And this is what I'm seeing in the energy industry. I'm seeing engineers take on roles that are non-traditional engineering roles. And the reason why is because they've built transferable skills in their own time. They've been proactive with the time and resources that have been given to them and have developed these skills over time. Remember, nothing in life comes for free and you have to be proactive with showing that you have the ability to take on this role as well. Remember, a nuclear power plant is like a small city. There are many different roles like procurement, supply chain, finance, there's business development, there's strategy, there's new build, there's operations, there's maintenance, there's research and R&D, and many other areas and departments that I may not even know about. Remember, this is a bit of a summary. It doesn't cover all of the jobs or careers that you could possibly take in the nuclear energy industry, and it's specific to Canada. Other countries across the world may have other energy programs that focus on different technologies, such as enrichment, or they may have different structures within the countries and how the utilities, regulate leaders and many other core groups within the industry operate. But remember, this is a Canadian perspective, but there may be overlap with other countries as well. And also remember that you don't need a background in nuclear engineering to do any of these jobs. A lot of the jobs in the nuclear energy industry need transferable skills that other industries are also developing. So remember, if you have these transferable skills, you're able to apply them. You can easily get your foot into the nuclear energy industry. Just wanted to put out that disclaimer as well. Also that this video is a bit subjective because it's based on my experiences and observations from what I've seen from my own personal experiences and also that of my colleagues and peers. Remember, I'm not representing representing human resources from any company specifically. So these aren't catered and tailored job descriptions. So I hope this disclaimer wasn't too long. All right, so this video was just a sneak peek into some of the careers and career paths that you could potentially take if you wanna get your foot in the door in the nuclear energy industry. Well, I hope that helped. I hope this was a bit of a flavor that inspires you to go and look and search for what's out there. Hope this video was helpful. Hope you can check out some of my other videos which can help you in your career in the nuclear energy industry and until then, take care. Bye.